Hey guys, I'm Anakin. I'm a Tekken pro and a Red Bull player. I'm a part of the fighting game community, a scene that grew out of one-on-one -on -one battles and rivalries in video game arcades. We're gonna take a look at some of America's most iconic arcades for the FGC. In the early 2000s, on the edge of Los Angeles was Arcade Infinity, known for rhythm and fighting games. But when it got the first Street Fighter IV cabinet in SoCal, it blew up with the top players. Ed Ma, Kino, Mike Ross, and Combo Fiend won countless tournaments, mixing the Rush Dash Down style with NorCal's clean and technical approach. We'll hear from some players who were there when AI was the place to be. What actually brought me into Arcade Infinity the first time was hearing the news of all the top players being there. And I was from a rival arcade. I was over at Family Fun Arcade. So I made that trip by myself right off the bat. You're hearing a bunch of noises as soon as you step in from all sorts of cabinets. The lighting made it worse. It was so dark in there. But no, it was. It, it felt like I was in a different dimension. I remember walking the first time into, uh, into AI, and it was just this loud, like, rush of bass. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you yeah. walk yeah. in, or just open the door, and next thing you know, you're hit in the face. It's like, oh god, like, what is going on? Because there's so many different rhythm games, and all the music is going on. And as you dive further in, there's all the fighting games and everything else. AI had the best Street Fighter 4 setup. They had the HD TV, they right? They didn't have, like, lines that were, like, 15 deep. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is before it was on console, right? So you, no one was importing the whole cabinet because that was way too expensive. So they had the, the big low lag HD TV and it only had like one frame of, of lag, which for, for 2008 was like really good, Super right? Impressive. So it was the best setup and the best positioning. The second thing was the food, right? Oh my God. Because oh, yeah. most of our cabinet was cheating that. though. You guys had a full on plaza of every type of exactly. thing you actually so asked great. for. Arcade Infinity was located in a strip mall called Diamond Plaza, this two floor strip mall in Roland Heights. and. One of the things that made it a compelling destination as an arcade was it was near like a lot of really good food, a lot of great, uh, especially Asian restaurants. Um, it, within the plaza, there was uh, a place called Life Plaza that would sell boba. And the thing about their their uh, boba tea specials was that they would only sell them in twos. You'd, you'd bring a homie along so you could split the boba, or if you have an extra, you might find someone who wanted it. Um, and it, it became kind of like a nice icebreaker, right? There wasn't really one type yeah. That was at that was at AI. Uh, you, you had nerdy types like myself at a point. You had they had friends who were tuners yeah. as well. For the initial game, like maximum. Yeah. I, yeah. I forgot what the other game was, but yeah. Uh, Long and yeah. midnight. Long and midnight. Yeah, yeah, there yes, we go. Yes, yes. They had typing of the dead there, man. You, you remember they the typing of the dead? They, they had in Japanese. Yes. yes. That was they the did. <laughs> no, it never so worked cool. when I got to play it, but I'll tell you what I love. <laughs> I love. I loved it when it did it work. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was really cool just because, like, even though. AI was known for like really great fighting game players. They literally had the best rhythm players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think his name is Ryan, right? He's like one of the best DJ Technica players oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in the world. Yeah. And he practiced that AI. So it's like what you said, when you're waiting in the long queue to play Street Fighter 4, people go and play other games. So that's how I kind of picked up Third Strike. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing like DJ Technica and I was like, look, UTJ. UTJ yeah, was really like, good at it. UTJ. Yeah, like one of the best Dawson players from SoCal in Street Fighter 4, he was also a really good rhythm game player had a Marvel scene, the KOF scene was there. We grew the Third Strike scene as well, and then all of these scenes still seem to feed into the giant SF4 scene. Arcade Infinity was such an interesting place in Southern California. Ken Tao, the owner, ran a JDM importing business, and because of that, he had access to the first machines or cabinets or boards of specific titles in the nation. When Street Fighter 4 came out, it was really fascinating. It was an arcade only release first. Didn't come out on consoles until much, much later. So we had people fly in or drive across America or even from other countries to Arcade Infinity just to play Street Fighter 4. So there was no other way to play it unless you go to Japan. And during that time, fighting games were uh, kind of on the downward trend. Four kind of uplifted the scene as a whole, brought everyone together, and brought in an entire new generation of players as well. When we started running tournaments and uploading them to YouTube, it was around that time when YouTube started getting a lot more HD uh, content. So I think the YouTube channel really helped magnify the arcade. And what's crazy about that is it spurred a bunch of other communities starting to put their own 
events together. So I remember mm -hmm. that in Arcade and Infinity, people started to bring their own consoles for Marvel Studios. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We even had people from other cities, like the San Diego community started right. coming out way more often into Arcade Infinity, making those drives out because it was a two in one. You would get Street Fighter 4 in its rawest form and then Marvel 3. Yeah. We started to see so many more different communities and they got that idea, it's like, oh, why don't we also try to do this ourselves with Marvel 3? Like, mm. sure, we can come here for Street Fighter 4, but like, this is the idea. This is it right here from Arcade Infinity. We need to do this as well. So if we want to level up, the crazy thing about it is, even though they got those communities together to practice and have their own kind of like weekend events, they would still come to AI yep. <laughs> because it was still the place to test your skill. Yeah. Yeah. Arcade Infinity had some of like the premier talents when it came to Street Fighter 4. The combo fiend, you had Edma, right? You had oh, yeah. like Vi Mike Ross. Through. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And Mike Ross, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Ed Ma was a mythical beast to me. There was something about him where he just knew how to break down fighting games. He understood the science behind it. And so that was already in my mind as like, yo, this guy is the person to play against. Win or lose, you have to play this guy. Oh, oh there we go, oh, there we go, the master. In the beginning, I was too afraid to even put my token up on the machine because I was scared of playing in front of everyone. For me, the, the, the ritual of taking out the token and putting it down there, it made it a lot easier. Cause I'm just like, no, I'm just waiting my turn, right? We're all trying to play this game. Uh, so if you weren't- Gymnastics behind it. Yep. No, 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 wait, wait, I put it like, Cause you are, are you sure? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure I'm next. Wait, bro, did you put two quarters up? Because I think I saw you put two up. Uh, no. Yeah, you put one on each cabinet. get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you better pick a well, side, man. <laughs> get out of here. There was yeah. an ultimatum. It was like, either you lose early and sit out the rest of the day, or exactly. it's better. There are so many people that are just like, this one is what I'm going to use for this entire day. And if I lose, then that's it for me. Right. So that's, you know, like that's just how everybody strive to become better players. You gotta remember that when you're playing in the arcades, you have to pay to play, right? So every match that you're playing is a little bit of a money match because whoever loses, if they wanna play again, they gotta put up another token. Right? So you're always playing for stakes, and that, that means that things are gonna be a little bit more serious than, than they would just if, if you were playing like on net play or you're playing at, at like a, a console setup or something like that at your house. It's like either you win and you get to stay on the machine or you lose and you gotta pay again. Maybe you gotta wait in line for the privilege of paying again. Oh, oh no knockdown! Oh, oh, punish. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, yeah. oh my that lord. That was forever. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I tried a little serpent roll with that. Fun. Super Turbo is fun. It's mad good. Why did I get stuck? Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't have this. Like we had such a prominent offensive style. Mm. That was what we were known for. Uh, right. The, the, the Valle, like uh, yeah. RTSD. Yeah. The yeah. 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 like East Coast yeah. was like the lame players, like right. Dominion yeah. and them. Yeah. They, they were the most defensive players on the planet. Okay. I remember what happened on the five v five. We got smoked. <laughs> we got destroyed. We got destroyed, yeah. and I was so sad because I was just like, you know, this is AI. These are the, my players that I like right. am training with, and we got destroyed. Like Sanford was smoking us. Li Joe. Sanford, Li Joe. I know Arturo was up the part. There was a, we were taking so many L's against the East Coast. I was so sad and I was like, oh man, we really need to step it up. There was a moment where Ed Ma, went, he just got sick and tired of it. He was just looking <laughs> at everybody, seeing our results. He stopped everybody from playing and decided to commandeer one of the, one of the chairs and just kind of like stand up on it. He's like, you guys all suck at this game. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, that was his entire speech revolved around, you guys suck at this game, something needs to change or else you guys are all gonna drown. <laughs> and we were just like, damn. This is true. I mean, it sucks, but I get it. It's it's necessary. This is what we call tough love. His teaching style is like a little bit nicer today. Like, not that much nicer. <laughs> he's a nice guy. That's the crazy thing is, he's he's totally a nice guy. He's not a yeah. d or anything. To be no. fair, he also invited people over to like a bunch of sessions, even mm -hmm. if it was like at his house. He was like, you know what, I'm I'm down to open up my house to you guys and figure out like you know what you need to do to get better. That's exactly what he yeah. did for me. He took yeah, me yeah. in and taught me how to play the game at a different level. And since then, we've had different variations of offense come from it. In Street Fighter 4, utilize, like really utilizing everything that our characters have, everything that the engine presents, right? In terms of like actually learning frame data, actually understanding what happens if you do dumb stuff. Street Fighter 4, I was super deep into it and I felt like on a personal level, you never know how much you grow as a player, right? But you can only view your tournament results. And if I'm not winning the tournament, I'm just like, damn, I'm not good enough. And then there was this one time I beat Combo Fiend, who's obviously a huge player. And I was just like, holy crap, like 
I can actually see some progress. My practice is finally paying off. Like I'm actually getting somewhere. AI is culture, the <laughs> talking, the money matching, mm -hmm. the, the, the yelling, right? The like, oh, let's take this out to the parking lot. I don't know how many people actually took it out to the parking lot. <laughs> they like, had to go down a hefty flight of yeah, stairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you want to that point. <laughs> no, no. But like, uh. you learn because Ed Ma is standing on a chair haranguing you, yeah. right? And that's how this, that's how SoCal built a lot of their best <laughs> players was just through this like, this, this mutual, it, I mean, it feels aggressive at first, it's a little harsh, right? But eventually you're like, oh, this is SoCal hype. Faded! Part of me thinks that Iron Fist can still win this by doing a random Tiger Uppercut. And there we go. And there we go. True testament to that playing like an idiot can still be pretty entertaining. My friend Jack, for, uh, he went, he goes by Combo Jack, and he was the guy that really, really got me out of my slump. We had made sure I had gas in the car, made sure there was there was food to be eaten. But a lot of people don't know this. I I was in between homes at that point. Like I oh, wow. like I was in the process of like trying to save where I was living. It didn't work out, so I moved in with a friend. But I needed like that sort of stability. And AI with all the people that there were that were there, it was this huge community of fun people that were all there for Street Fighter 4. So we all have like a common purpose. He never let me say, okay, yeah, just go play 3S. You don't, you're done with this. No, you're still, he still helped me like say, hey, you're, you're gonna learn this. Like, hey, just do this, do this, do this. And he didn't let me give it up. In an Asian family, it's like, oh, the girl should not be staying out so late. I was coming home at like seven in the morning hey. because we would go, we would go to Arcade Infinity and play and then to a close, then we go to Vid94 and play. Yep. Yeah, Vid94 yep. and I was when it closed, we would eat Denny's in the morning and then go home. So I was coming home at like 7, 8 in the morning. I would sleep, wake up at 3, 4 p.m., rinse and repeat every single day. Go back to Arcade Infinity and play. I did that every day for the summer. It kept me out of trouble, and my dad like my dad, never had an issue with it. He might not support it wholeheartedly, but, you know, I wasn't coming home drunk or anything. <laughs> I don't want to hear about these own, from these 0-9ers what, what true fundamentals Let me pick, let me like, pick okay? Ken, then. Hey, how about that? That's the old, like, I'll pick Ken. Being able to see AI grow was amazing, but then seeing it not be able to get the support that it needed to continue was heartbreaking because for me that's like that's like your 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 neighbor saying the experience that you love we think that's whack we don't want you hanging out there until 3 a.m making friends playing video games unfortunate circumstances i suppose with how arcade licenses work arcade infinity's license was ending and the city you know it almost brings a tear to my eye but they didn't renew the license. They didn't want anybody else hanging out at that arcade for too yeah. late. They had like a delinquency notice. They're like, you know what, you guys have too many people at this at like part of the day. The at like four in the morning, just loitering in front of the arcade. You can't yeah. do that anymore. I hate bringing up the last days of AI because it's, it's a shot to the heart. Of course. But the beautiful thing was those last few days of AI, the last couple of weeks coming to a close, and you saw everybody come back. Mm -hmm. It was that, that, yeah. that giant reunion, like, like that one night only feeling, just to pay homage one last time mm -hmm. to home. You know, for myself, it was such a sad feeling. It was just like, as if a chapter of my life has ended. I felt like a piece of me was kind of lost, but I took it in stride and all the experiences I had, internalized it and then used it to grow my passions. It actually led me into a very, very fun and lucrative career, which is talking about Street Fighter for a living. I actually just came back from a trip to Poland for the Intel World Open. It's essentially like the Olympics for esports. Uh, they held Street Fighter V and Rocket League for the first time, and they had me on board for Street Fighter V. And right now I'm doing the Capcom Pro Tour and Street Fighter League pretty much on the desk talking about Street Fighter. As a commentator, I always want to make sure if somebody's watching it for the first time, that they're getting the information that they need and it's palatable for everybody. So I work as a producer in video games. I was a designer for a little bit. Um, been working on a, a fighting game with Riot for about five years now. I ran to a whole bunch of international players at huge tournaments and I was like, you guys are really good. How come you guys don't come to the US to compete? And a lot of them always expressed to me that visas just aren't a feasible thing for them. So that's how I got the idea of my program, e -Fight Pass. It kind of breaks down like what would you need to get a visa to come to the US as an esports player? 
I launched it and it blew up. Ultimately afterwards, I took a lot of what I learned from the people and the love of the scene and community at Arcane Infinity. I joined Twitch and helped create the Capcom Pro Tour for the people. Literally every single time on it, it all happens. Oh!